Hi, my name is Mark Rendelman. It's uh, October something in 19... 2018? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from 19. It's 2018. Mm -hmm. And this is my house, and we're on the Beta of the Rio Grande, which is the... we're along the Rio Grande River Valley here. And uh, what you're looking at is this is the back of my house, actually, which was there, which was in the hill, and now the hill's over here, you see? And this is the actual hillside, which I dug back, I pushed back, and built my house into the hill. So I would get this nice climate. And when I was coming through here with my backhoe, I started digging. And I started digging a little cave because I wanted a place to store things. And I was also bringing my water and my air into the house. So I brought the air and the water into the cave because Reagan was in office at this time. And... And we thought there might be a nuclear war, so I built everything so I could survive here for a while, right? So when I first came in, I went back here and it started caving in on me. So I was, I tried to make everything square and it kept falling in on me. So I, all of this is reinforced concrete on the surface here. It's solid. This isn't the, the natural material. I can show you later what it's made of. But, so I was a little concerned about it caving in, so I started making circles. So I made one little circle here, and I made it around. I said, that's good, I'm going to make a bigger circle. So I went this way, and it went that way too, but we'll come back around. So I made a circle, and what I was always trying to have is a storage room, because that was my original purpose. So here's one of my first storage rooms. And also because I liked sleeping in the cool, I put a bed in here so I could sleep in here also. But this is a storage room. But this is the reason you see the rust and the marks is because this was all, it's all reinforced concrete. And I got a little thin with the covering there. So that's the fejo, the iron in the walls that's coming through, and the rust. And I kept going around. I call this cave the cave of experiments because I tried all kinds of different materials and ways of finishing. And I've got some art. Nothing about this cave is finished. I'm a painter, so to me it won't be finished until I get to the surface level where the colors and the, the paint. So I started out. There's uh, this, I call this the West Cave. There's basically a north, south, east, west orientation to the entire cave. And um, here's another. This was another room that uh, was a storeroom. And it was beautiful because it had this tremendous sound capacity. So it's become like a sound room. You can kind of hear my voice echoing. So I used to be able to make hum and make these great reverberations. And everyone thought I was some kind of guru or somebody who could make these sounds. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when we get in here and play drums and stuff, it's just magical because it just starts going and growing and growing. And, you know. It's awesome. So... We, it, it, everything connects up, you see. There's little caves going to other caves through here. You see one over, look, look over there, see? It goes to another cave, and up here, see? There's even a little doll over in that cave. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and uh, there's a little surprise area, but the reason for all the caves, the, all the different things, is to create ventilation and openness so people don't feel claustrophobic and oh, it dries out. So. Cool. The first year that I did it, uh, I didn't have any exits. So all the moisture from the cave went into my house and froze on my windows. It was like an inch thick of ice, you know, during the winter. And it almost broke the windows because it was just so much humidity coming from the cave. So I learned and I made exits so there would be ventilation going through all the time. And then for, to control the climate in the house, all I have to do is open and close doors. And the, the, the compression from between up and down the valley gives me cool air in the summer and warm wow. air in the winter. So it works great. We'll go down the West Cave first because it's sort of the most finished. It's, uh, I call it the museum, right? But, you know, something you'll see a lot of very strange art here. I inherited, I used to be a director at the Center of Contemporary Arts, and we had a big warehouse that they needed to get rid of stuff, and they owed me a bunch of money, so <laughs> I collected. This is one, actually, just a ventilation tunnel for my house. I put this in just to, because oh. I can close that door, and all the cool air can just go right in there, and I, you know. That's why the house has a nice climate. You know, when we walked in, I, I don't have any heating or electricity, anything oh, running there. It's that's amazing. Magical. This was a famous artist, Eugene Jardine. I couldn't afford his work by any means, but he came here and he saw my cave and he said he wanted my, his work in my cave. I've got four of his pieces and, and uh, because he, when he died there, he had a show and, you know. So a lot of the art that came What's in here name? was because of Eugene Jardine. He was a... French, so I don't know, Hardin, you'd probably say in French, I don't know. But he was, uh, you know, 
He was gay, actually he had AIDS when he had this, that's why he said, he was famous for these little guys, see the guy in the back here? This is quite a piece I, to me, but he, he was famous for doing these little guys, and he, you know, now he's nailed to the monster. This was actually the last one he did, and no one, it freaked people out so much they didn't want him, I guess. <laughs> Okay. Let's see other ones. This is one. Actually, the order is that when you, because that's coming in from the outside, the order is that that one when he first found out he had AIDS, and then here's later. And this young man on his way to the spirit world. Art. And I have a lot of different friends. You know, actually, this is one of mine, but. Um, oh, that's a piece of your, your art? Yeah, well, when I was young, and this. You know, I've got all kinds of different stuff. You know, here are people that are friends. And so a lot of people have just put things, like I said, I couldn't afford Eugene stuff, but he, he's like collected by Johnny Carson and all these movie stars like his work. And so they've been, so, but I, I couldn't afford it, but you know, he wanted it in here. So when he died, I got it. Yeah. That's great. So this is, like I said, the West Cave. This is all part of the show that was at the CCA that um, caused quite a scandal. <laughs> This piece here was uh, like an $80,000 sculpture, these New York artists that came to Santa Fe and did these things all out of natural materials. And um, then they were gonna destroy it. They, they discovered you know, the light and they decided they were gonna get rid of art and go on and join Greenpeace. You know? And they were going off to sail to sa try to save the world. And so they were gonna destroy all their work and this critic said, hey, well, I know a place that'd be really cool if you just leave it. So I, I ended up with a lot of their work. Wow. The Duttons, you know, they were, that's cool. So I like this cave. This is sort of just one of the stages the caves are in. And you can see it because I left the texture. Almost all of the cave went through this stage. Oh, but I really? left this. This is what it looks like when I'm shaping it with a pick. And, but I liked it because it had so much texture and it's fun. You can lie down there and you kind of get this thing where you reverse. Yeah. You can't see what's going in and out. And this also faces due west. So the sun sets here a good part of the year. You get to see the sunset coming in here. Wow, that's amazing. And so, uh, going a little bit of the technical aspect of uh -huh. actually doing this work, because you're, you're talking about the texture here. Yeah. So, you, you, to start, you use, I guess, a bigger tool, and then as you get into it's it... It's all you... pick, pick and shovel. A pick, you know, do you know what a Maddox is? Mm -hmm. It's got a pointed end on one side and a flat blade on the other. Oh, okay. So, this is the flat blade side, but I, I, to dig in the hard stuff, I use the pointed thing, and I, what I do is make lines. And I, and I make them into chunks, and then you just hit them, and they knock off. And I can go about, uh, for a regular size cave, I can go about a foot an hour. The thing that's interesting is that one foot of dirt digging is like three feet of dirt in the wheelbarrow. Three cubic feet. Wow. Because it fluffs up, you know, yeah. when the air gets in. So, you know, it's a lot more dirt. So the, most of the work is not the digging. Most of the dirt was, was getting out. it out. Oh, getting, <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to take wheelbarrows. So actually this cave, you see, you said, well, how'd you do that with the wheelbarrow? Well, see, the, the thing was, the cave, the, the cave was up here. This was the level of the cave. So this is what you can do with caves. You don't have to think about, you know, you can go down as well as up. Wow. <laughs> so I just dug this down. So in other words, that's how the roof got so high, is I didn't make the roof high. I brought the floor down afterwards. Wow, that's and great. I, that's I awesome. Level up, so. Wow. This is amazing, Mark. Thank you for... This is one of the only doors that faces north, and I had it because to bring light in, and you can't see it anymore because it's all fallen down, but I had like mirror balls, and they threw light in here, like these little mirror balls right there, mm -hmm. and I had stuff reflecting, so I would reflect the light all the way down through the cave, but I, like I said, I haven't, I don't maintain it. You can see there's cobwebs and stuff. Mm -hmm. These are some more of the Duttons, and then there's some more of the stuff that was from CCA. This goes out to Snack, said his friend asked if he could store his equipment here. I thought it was like one, he said it's just a band full. <laughs> it's like, he's a, he's a musician, recording musician. He's left it here and it's been here almost two years. Now. I'll show you here. Go ahead. So just to show you where we are, you see the house there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. That's where we came in, see we went in the front. Mm -hmm. You can see the hill that I cut into now, you can see where I was, see? Mm -hmm. And how the house was, that's the old house there. And then I and so there's actually a bedroom. My master bedroom is planned for there. Each of these exits is supposed to become a bedroom. That was my plan. Because I used to be like an insomniac and I'd be up all night. And I didn't like going to bed and everyone wanted to go to bed. And I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> so I decided to make the, the bedrooms 24 hour private and the house 24 hours public. So you could, if you wanted to be up, you could be up. And if you wanted to be sleep. Oh. So, I just, so all the cave exits are, were designed here like to become bedrooms. But wow. I haven't. 
like I said, I went broken. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of work and uh, it's a lot of it's time and the money too, right? You have all this. Yeah, well, it was just all for fun. I just did it for fun. It was just exercise. You know, I didn't, it's just a, when I did all the hours together that I put in and other people, a guy, Rob Paulette, who's now become famous for his caves, uh, he helped a lot on this last cave we were in. He, he did stuff. Um, the, the total time that I calculated with all our hours and stuff up to a certain point, it's, I've done more since, but it was about one hour working, 40 hour a week for 14 months. That's all. It wasn't a lot of time, but it, you know, you just do two or three hours a day and stuff, you know. You can get worn out pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once yeah. I was in shape, I could keep going for five or six hours, but yeah. um, I didn't usually have that kind of time. So. And this is a volcanic material, right? Uh, yeah, this, ash? this is I call tufa. It's got different names, but it, this is just settled volcanic ash. It was a lake bed, and then the whole volcano blew up, and that's where all the black rock and stuff on this top comes from in this rock. So this is obviously, it's something the hill fell down and the, mm -hmm. the exterior is, part, right? Yeah, and it's just, see, that's how it got underground. Because I started running, and we'll go to the other side, and you'll see I started under, running into underground rocks like deep and I was like what's this I never had, had encountered a rock until you know it's all of a sudden it was like I was finding rocks and so there must have been an opening and the earth opened up and there were this whole thing area is a big fault line you know from ancient times and so it goes way down into the earth huh. how amazing go ahead. you sure you're gonna have enough memory there yeah <laughs> Yeah, I can tell you stories about every one of these sculptures. This is a New York artist who's famous for doing movable pictures, but she was afraid of going in the cave, so this is as far as she said, as long as I can see the outside. Uh, it's, a, it's a long story. It's really kind of beautiful stories about a lot of this stuff. Wow. How it got here. And stuff. So, like, this is the cave disco, I call it, which was, you know, I had the original idea as having a room of mirrors, but, you know, I, all I could find that I could bring in the rough, that rough road we came in on mm -hmm. was plexiglass. The problem with plexiglass is it changes constantly, you know, so, like, it's become like a fun house. This mirror usually distorts you so bad you can't even see, and now today it's almost normal. Huh. But some, sometimes you walk by, it's just fun, you know, to look at yourself and change. That's pretty cool. You can be really fat one day and really skinny the next, <laughs> and, you know. This is a model actually for another room I did of mirrors, but you can look down in there. You might be able to get a picture with your camera. Oh, look at this, how cool. Oh man, with the camera is awesome in fact. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. This is yeah, great. I was walking through with my mom here who is an invalid of about 25 years. She barely could walk, she had had a stroke and half her body was kind of paralyzed, but she got, got through. and. And when we were standing right about here, I was just digging this, and she said, you know, I want yours and my dad's ashes here. And uh, so I didn't really like the idea, but it gave me the idea of building a, a, a religious space, because I was just looking for different excuses of kinds of spaces, like, so this is my cave disco. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, the light for the disco was all natural before. That's the western sky there, and the light oh, comes yeah, through, like, remember yeah, from there? That's great. And I have a mirror that hangs here, and it just naturally spins with the air current, so and it, like, this. it throws these lights all around. Yeah. There. So, and of course, it's kind of an infinite space. If you look back, you yeah. can see it goes. Oh, yeah, look so, at that. That's really cool. So, but she said that, and so here's where I started doing the chapel. The chapel, or what they call it. Igreja, né? Yeah, I mean, the but temple. It's a chapel. We call chapel. it chapel. A chapel, I don't know, just a little place to worship, but here's my parents' ashes here. And it happened just before I used to do an annual solstice party for invite everybody for summer solstice. and. So we had a celebration here, and we lit the fire for the first time, and I didn't know about the parameters that you had to have for a chimney. <laughs> so all this, the whole cave filled up with smoke. So we were all walking around here because the smoke was up here. <laughs> and we are all walking around the, the cave on, on our down low, you know. <laughs> but um, this is my parents here. And my family is my... There's Mia and Jasmine and Scarlett. Scarlett's just off to Harvard now. Mm -hmm. did it during her, oh, she her is? Oh, wow. Graduate work got full scholarship. And uh, to save the world, you know, so it's wow. great. They, they're Harvard supporting good causes because that's her goal is try and bring common sense and wow. stuff into construction, city planning, and all that stuff. Yeah, so environmental engineering, you know, that stuff, architecture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my parents. Is that your mom here? Uh, that's my sister actually. Your sister? Yeah. And then your mom? My mom. That's one. This is my mom and dad. Um, she's not here. That that's her. 
from back. This is from World War II, Okinawa, my dad. Mm. In the Second World War, he was captain of a medical ship that was sent in Hiroshima after they dropped the bomb, so kind of messed his life up. And I didn't know about any of it because my parents never talked. So I, I learned not to ever ask questions <laughs> oh. because I never knew that that's what I was supposed to do. You got to ask questions, they're going to find out, right? So my, I wasn't allowed to speak unless spoken to. So that's mm. the way my parents, mm. I don't, fortunately I found the Uniao and I can learn how to light peace and love. And yes. <laughs> it's beautiful. I've learned more about parenting from, from the ministry than anybody. And now my children are teaching me, you know, unfortunately my other children didn't have the benefits, you know. Yeah. So. But they all came to Zunia before I did. Well, except for Scarlett. It took Scarlett a long time to come. She's in the UV now. She goes to in, you know the East Coast now. Yeah. Well, oh, I, in Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. So that was another East West cave. This is actually I started making rooms just for sound, and actually, Hikardo's room was designed originally as a sound room. Can you feel, can you uh, yeah? We're gonna get your Hikardo's room. So you speak, the lines here specifically for that for for the sound, right? It was just yeah, it went, it's gone through various permutations of things that I found out, and mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I've had other rooms. The first room started out like that. There was just like, and I learned how to sing from it because I could never carry a tune. And from this cave working in here, I started hearing my voice, and I learned how to carry a note, and I can sing on pitch mm -hmm. now and everything. Maintain the note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, just from being in this cave, it's like wow. I never could sing before, and all of a sudden I was like. Wow, I can do this. <laughs> That's great. I don't sound horrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. So that goes down to the cave we went into that was like tall. I said the sound that was the, yeah. where we drummed and stuff. Uh -huh. I'm just going to skip around some things because otherwise we'll never get there. Yep. Um, and actually, we walked through there before, but this goes up to Hikardo's cave. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to get to see Cacao's ca Caverna do Cacao. Yeah, cacao. Ricardo's cave. Ricardo, but... I'm cacao. I know he's famous as cacao. Cacao. Mangabeira. Cacao Mangabeira. Onde o cacao Mangabeira trabalhou. O Mark. Usually when you talk, you talk, you can hear a certain tone. It's, it's like reverberating, you know? Mm -hmm. Talk. 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 Awesome. <laughs> this is great. Show me. Yeah. I think you saw. Oh, anywhere. It's just, I, I, I'm going to do it here because I'm going to, I keep saying, I'm going to make that end of the cave so it reflects it back into this tunnel. So it's right now. Isn't that what you cacao face? Yeah. Mark, tell us about the, how, Cacao was, he brought him to, he was ended here, right? Yeah, that's all right, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, there was no, this cave wasn't here, the connected, when he did it. He just came in here, and you know, this was, he, he helped in other parts of the cave. It's just that I gave him, he wanted to have a cave of his own. Oh. So, you know, and I told him what I wanted, and he did it. So, it was, you know, because there was no rules. I didn't have a plan with this cave. It doesn't really have a purpose other than just for fun, so... You know, I mean, you could say it's a bomb shelter, but then I realized they made such a monstrosity that if there was ever a bomb, everyone would come here. <laughs> so it would not be a safe place to be. <laughs> Everybody looking for food. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to be here. I'd want to be out in the wilderness. You say three months, 14 hours working here. Yeah, probably not just this room. He helped me, you know, like I said, most of the work was hauling the dirt out. So he, I would hire people to come and help me move the dirt. And I would do the digging. So, but he dug this one himself, and I don't remember if he really finished it or not. I don't know if he remembers. Você começou isso antes de conhecer no projetal? This room, no, because that's I knew the cardinal only because of the Unión de Vegetal. <laughs> so this room, I was already in the Unión like two years. Oh, okay. So cool. I, I came January '96 was my Adventicio, and then he said he was here in '97. 
Here we have uh, our sister Liana here, who's uh, asking questions and also getting to tour the, the cave. Eliana de Porto Velho, wow. Yeah, yeah. Muito estranho para encontrar, mas... Yeah, legal. Estou no outro lado do mundo, né? Yeah, eu estou, assim, encantada com esse, essa caverna aqui, porque eu imaginava uma outra coisa. Uh -huh. e, e como o Cacau contou essa história uh -huh. na, numa sessão, então eu estou sentindo, assim, um momento assim, bem especial para ele e eu estar tá presente também. Eu assim, também. Um momento, sabe de grandeza para ele, para gente. Uhum. Muito bom poder compartilhar, porque eu estou falando para o Mark, assim, eu pedi, eu I asked to Mark to talk about it because it's such a special thing, like to him is like he's he's the owner, he's lives here, in his house, <laughs> but is that because we have friendship and we have friendship with Cacau too, and so it's very meaningful, it's beautiful to go back into history and learn about people's way of being, how why they are, the why the the way that they are, and It's, it's a beautiful thing to know the origin of things. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the connections are pretty amazing. Yeah. The small world that we have and how we all end up together, you know? Yeah. It's really magical. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I never, like I said, I never really had a plan even to have a cave. I, you know, it was more just like I was going to have a little storage room. You know, and it was only because it was there. That I never thought of, like, oh, I want to make a cave. Yeah. Yeah. And now I got people calling me all the time, you made me a cave. <laughs> so it's become a very kind of thing. They even had a, a big uh, convention down the river because this guy came from one of my lands to have his own cave. Yeah. So here we have the the man. The man of this hour. The cave. Of the, of the cave room. There's the man. It's, well, that's not the one that you use. Yeah, I know that. The ones he used so, are more... Uh, this is... This is This is Cacau Mangabeira. Cacau Mangabeira is the the man who we were talking about who made this room. Made this room here. It's his room. That's what I call it. His room. <laughs> Salão Bahia. <laughs> Salão de Ricardo Mangabeira. Na época era só Ricardo Mangabeira. At the time that he was only Ricardo Mangabeira. No, Cacau is was, was his name in Brazil, but I didn't. I knew him as Ricardo. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, at his house they call him Cacau. It's his <laughs> at his home in, in Bahia, the top of it. Yeah. Actually, it's Laura de Freitas there, right? Yeah, yeah that was sure. Uh -huh. Delegada, Wait. here we have a Cacau Mangabeira's wife too. <laughs> She came to learn about this this beautiful, you know, moment in in time in Cacau's life and Mark and and it's beautiful to be here with all of you. It's yeah, really really cool. So. Yeah, well, when we're, when we're not filming, I, I want to tell you this, some stories about how surprised I was when he married you, or when you got together with you. So, it's not who I thought he was. He was going to get married? What? <laughs> you found a chunk, huh? Yeah. No, we picked it out of the wall. Oh, you took it out. All right, well, put it somewhere where it looks like it's meat intentional. Like, a, like you, well, it almost could be in the show. Okay. And look, this all this art is from people who just have come here. I don't know how it got to, gets here even sometimes. I don't think it has anything to do with me. It's like uh, you know, people get inspired in a lot of places, you know, because I've been trying to make smooth surfaces, but they, people make beautiful things. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's really got a hand of, and how they make drawing. I mean, it's like got the freedom of a pencil, but it's in the sand. You know? Yeah, it's really cool. Is uh, it okay? Não sei. Só pessoas vêm aqui. Eu quero saber. Eu não sei. 2004. You know, some of it's very simple and crude. Some people left their names, you know, and so that's nice. I get to know that they're here. <laughs> I left my name. Cool. Where is it? Um, somewhere. From a long time ago? Or no, where? just from now. It's the first time I'm here. Oh, okay. This is your first time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is awesome. Here. This is a really great. This cave was funny because we're in the middle of the, the mountain. And the problem is the deeper you go, the more fragile the mountain is. It's stronger as you get to the surface because that's where the surface tension yes. is, the weight. And in the middle, it's almost like you could just take out the middle of the mountain and it would just sit there. So, so there's no support. So what happened was, this wasn't here, this part down underneath here. But what happened was, is I was, you know, I don't know where I was, but I dug most of this cave. It was a regular smooth cave. And then I, like, there was a crack forming over here, and I went and I went up to it, and I rubbed it like that. And all of a sudden, it opened up, 
and the whole cave, one chunk fell, and then another chunk fell, and the whole cave went boom, boom, boom. <laughs> the whole cave, I, was, I could have been in it, but I wasn't, you know, it was just like, came down, so I went, oh, that's interesting. So you can see all these, these things. It's amazing. How <laughs> naturally, you speak so naturally about it, it's amazing. Like, well, it was, you live and learn. It's like, it's, uh, you know, it was an experiment. And now all of this is that way. Used to, I'd maintain it by wiping out all the things because it wouldn't let the air in. But because that's what caused it. It's like the change in temperature and moisture because it's been like this for 20 years. You know, once it stabilizes, it just stays this way. I mean, that's not stable. Look at this. Look at that. It's a big, huge crack and stuff. But it, it sits. Because once it got through doing whatever it was going to do, it did it, and that's it. Oh, I got it. I got oh, it. You guys oh, taking Jesus. apart my cave. <laughs> guys, what are you going to do with the dirt? <laughs> you really want that piece of wood? What? Wow. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? We'll leave it there because it, it, now it'll, people will see it and somebody will probably pull it out. <laughs> the problem is, is that we have to clean up all yeah, the yeah. But you don't know. Yeah. I don't think we're going to have time. Because I also, you know, once we get through the cave, if we ever get through the cave, I want to take you out to the river because that's the part I like. I put more work outside than I do in the cave. Okay, yeah, no, whatever you think it's best, you know. Oh, Scarlett left her name here. And Mark. Huh. Scarlett left her name here. I see it. Yeah, she probably left it in a few places. Oh, you want to go through the hole? I think she left one place where she said Scarlett peed here. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny. I think it's in the other room, yeah. Oh, now all funny. the kids, you know, my kids, of course, have played here a lot. And they bring their friends, and that's where most of them came from. Boy, look at these guys. So look at all this. This isn't normally this way. They've been having fun hacking up the kids. This yeah. Dude, you guys, something. So they left their mark, you know. <laughs> oh man, talk about that's a lot of work. <laughs> then they have to come work. Well, that's good. I always like work. <laughs> so this seems to be rocks. This is the part you said that you're well, no, on. No, yeah, it wasn't. This wasn't where I first encountered the rock, but it was like in. in it's related to this area. Yeah, I, I ran into some. We, we'll go through. We're, we're still just seeing about a third of the caves. So oh wow. Okay. Maybe half. Or, yeah. But it's all, this is sort of like a suite of rooms. It kind of goes around. You can see all the connections if you go through looking and see all the vent holes and stuff. So none of this was here on the floor until today. So this, this isn't normally how it looks. <laughs> the boys are having fun. I have a question. Uh, how, long, uh, how many, what year do you start? I started in 1987. Keep playing. 1987. Hey, Joel. Yeah. Yeah. Joel. Oh, I still got, I'm still being filmed, I guess. Huh? I should keep moving. You're going to run out of ah, okay. So, yeah, I made this as like an area for suite, sort of like bedroom, so people could actually stay in here. So there's, there actually was supposed to be a room in there for bed. Got some various bedrooms. This direction. <laughs> if you guys want to start cleaning up, you can, but I don't think we're going to get very far. There's wheelbarrows and stuff in each each one of the doors you can usually can kind of get out of, but I I'm not sure you can get out of so the show. It's been so long since it's been open. This is the first bedroom, the first uh, place. So actually below left. you, there's a huge, there's a room that goes down a couple levels, and I was going to put a glass floor here because they could look up. I've got the glass for it, but I never finished. And it's hollow. You can kind of hear it's hollow, but it goes, and you can see it from down below. And then the light goes from here down into the other level where it was. Wow. Looks like I got an animal was in here. I think that's that doesn't look like the boys. This is the boys. None of this was here. Oh, wow, look at that. Nice big chunk. <laughs> so watch out. Watch your head here, too. Oh I don't God. know if anybody's too tall. This, this rock's got a name of the guy. He knocked himself out. I warned him because he's really tall. He's this famous filmmaker, Godfrey Reggio. I don't know if you've seen, like, Poyana Scotsi or Poyana Scotsi. I said, Godfrey, watch out for this rock. And he didn't hear me or something, and he knocked himself out here. Oh, so no. I call it Godfrey's Rock. That's a painted it white. Wow. So yeah, this is the cave where I started. I f encountered a rock there on the floor, and it was we were right in the middle of the mountain. But you'll see, there's rocks all over the place. Thank you. That's another room. 
<laughs> Actually, this part caved in. It was kind of a natural thing, and I liked it because it was in these nice big chunks, and, and I left it. And then somebody came in here and said, oh, I want to help Mark out. So they cleaned it out. But I liked it. It was like, <laughs> I kind of liked the one this is a big sculpture, you know, the, the chunks that fell out. Mm -hmm. but the kids, the other thing was, is that most of the cave was designed because of the kids. Wow. They, they would, like, come in here and play hide-and-go-seek. They'd turn out all the lights and go running around. <coughs> oh, my God. And, uh, and so I realized that it needed exits everywhere. So there's no room. I don't think there's any more room with dead ends. Like your room, you know, was a dead end. It was like a, you know, uh -huh. and then I go, I go, I go, I go, I So I decided everything had to have at least two ways to go. Eu vou te passar, Cacau, esse vídeo aqui pra gente... É isso que eu quero. Passar Pode deixar. Eu, eu tô... peço, pra mim não adianta muita coisa. Que ah. que fosse Mas a gente pode chamar... Shalom's getting the whole story, yeah. so you, you guys yeah. can... You don't even have to listen to me anymore. <laughs> so all this, there's paint... I don't know if you can see, but these rocks have been painted, actually. And this was a famous artist. I, this is a really interesting story, but I, I encountered my cave in a museum show in Rio de Janeiro at the oh. National Gallery. <laughs> Because this woman is a famous artist who came here and said, can I work in your cave? And she, she makes pigments out of this stuff that she finds in the nature and the soil and stuff like that. And she makes pigment and makes these natural paintings. So these rocks aren't naturally this way. She just started painting my rocks and stuff. And then she took pictures of it. And then I was in the, going through this museum show, and there's a picture of my cave. Wow, that's <laughs> I was great. Like, wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, we went there to get get just some of her green card, you know. It was the only reason I went to Rio, which is funny, because as an American, I grew up, the only place I even knew about Brazil was Rio, and that was the only place I ever wanted to go. And I never had been to Rio in, like, how many years I'd been in the UV. Been all over Brazil, but I never went to Rio, except I had to go there, because that's mm -hmm. where the embassy yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the only place I could get a green card in one day, you know. And, like, because a lot of people, my, my daughter worked for two years to get a green card for her husband and couldn't get it, you know. And so mm -hmm. I did it all, and they, they kept saying, oh, it's not possible. You have to, you have to do it. It takes several months at least, and you got to wait. And I said, why? Tell me why. Tell me why. And you just keep asking why. What's, well, what do I have to do? Okay, I'll do that. And then what do you have to do? And, so and by the time I arrived there, I'd add, they said, well, do you have this? And I said, there's that. And do you have that? And I said, it's like, <laughs> I got That's my green card in one day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you can do it. But if people didn't, nobody believed me, even at the embassy. They didn't believe you could do it. But I said, well, I could called ahead. You know, I, we decided a month before we were going to get married that we were going to get married. And I did it all from Santa Fe. I arranged the whole thing and then we just spent, we had to spend six days in Rio because I had to get doctors, certain doctors they have in the payroll. You yeah. Know, have to <laughs> hire them. And, uh, yeah, so this cave is more for filming because, you know, it's more texture. You know, the other cave, like remember on the other side, is all so smooth. It doesn't, you know, but the video works. So this is one of the, this is what they call the East Cave. And this is an exit. It exits actually on the other side of the mountain from the house. The house is back over there. And yeah, when, when you're when you're first going like here, it's just dirt, right? And then you counter a rock. And so you, you, it's this big, you know, and oh look, there's a little rock. And you start going and then pretty soon it's not a little rock, it's huge. So when I, I started this cave, I found a rock at that end. So I said, well, I'll start on the outside and come in and meet it. So I started here and then uh, yeah. So, um, so here I started going, and I couldn't. This was all rocks from the outside thought, in, right? Yeah, I came in everywhere I hit. It was like, and I started cutting and cutting. It, it was this was solid rocks, you know. But it, I didn't know, you know. And then I found that there were little cracks between the rocks, so I started working there. So there wasn't an opening here. I had to like take the rocks out that were here. It was like a rock fall or something, you know and got through, and then I found out, I got all, all the way up to that rock I was telling you about, yeah. and I dug from the bottom, uh -huh. it was as big as a car, <gasps> and there was no way I was gonna get it out of there, so I built the cave over the rock. You know? Wow. Yeah, so, it's the nice part about caves, you can go down as well as up. So in other words, this is the east bedroom. I got a plan and a design for this. It's gonna be sort of Hobbit style. It's gonna do with steel and concrete and more, sort of make it all just round and curvy. But here's uh, the bait of the heel. And uh, so they get a little wow. bit of that. There's TP down here, it was famous for a couple marriages, came out of that TP. Oh. Romantic adventures, you might say. <laughs> There's a sequia here. Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, it's just a hole in the wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was in the
And I have about a half a mile land that way. And, uh, you know, I was uh, telling Shalom that I actually, there's more work I do on the outside than the inside. So all the rock we're going to, but I, what I do is try to make nature look natural. Like you, normally it wasn't, you couldn't walk through here or anything. It was all, all these trails. Oh, I had a rock come down. Look at that. That just rolled down. I wasn't here last week when I was here. The rain. So the house is uh, on the other side of the mountain here. We're just like on the other side. Huh. But we can walk back through. Are we? Are we're we almost done? done. Yeah. Yeah, I'm close. I mean, okay. there's some other parts, but. What, you want to keep going? What is your favorite part of the the cave, Mark? No, I don't. No specific. I've never thought of that. No. Okay. No, I mean. Uh, there's no part I remember specifically. I mean, you know, you get an idea and then you do it and then you get another idea. Yeah, yeah. It was just sort of like, it's, I'm a painter. So like I said, I'm like always, so know, work in progress, right? Yeah, work in progress. Cool. All of it is just to learn, you know? All right. So we're viewing this beautiful nature here after, you know, having this tour, we're going to finish it up with Mark's going to show us the, the, the end of it. But there's a special place for Mark too, the, the, the river, which is so beautiful with these trees, the, the well, you cotton. kind of see the river down through here sparkling yeah. through the trees. Cacao. Yeah. Yeah. This is really, really special. Oh, what a beautiful day. And also one of the reasons it's called Imbudo is that mountain you see. It looks like a funnel, upside down funnel. That's what the word Imbudo means. Imbudo means funnel, right? Funil, yeah. Funil. Okay. Ah, I see. So you can see the mountain. But it's and also, you can see, this is where all the, the, the Imbudo River comes from there and the Rio Grande and the Comanche Canyon. These three canyons come together here. So it's like oh. the funnel of the canyons. Huh. Here, so. Patricia. 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 Patricia.